But Paul knew I can go to him. And notice what Paul knew. I can plead with him. Some folk, you ask them something one time and they cut you off. They don't want to hear nothing else from them. They already they ain't helping you. Go on. But see, Paul knew God. He, he, he knew you can plead with him. Anybody ever had to plead with him? Lord! Help! Now! One time I know just help sometime. This week sometime. Did my Lord, help! Now! If you don't help me! And then he show up and give you some peace. Then he show up and just touch you. Then he show up and just allow you to feel his presence and do and nothing change. You recognize I'm in his presence and in his presence is fullness of joy. At his right hand, a pleasure forevermore. Boy, I've gotten in the presence of God. Got happy right there in his presence. Walked out of the room. Didn't care what changed or not. Knew God had my back. Knew God was going to take care of her. Knew we wasn't going to lose nothing. Could go to my spouse and tell her we ain't going to lose nothing. And cause that person to believe because it's so on you. Come on, somebody. So he goes to him pleading. But listen, but God in his sovereignty chooses not to move it. See, if you're going to know about God's sustaining grace, one reason you're going to know it or know about it is because the more you mature, he won't move everything. Can I, can I just be real? It seems like sometimes when you're immature, he moves it before you even ask. Anybody remember being there when you was immature? You, you about to ask him to move it. He said, I'm, I'm already on that. I'm already on that. <laughs> I mean, when I was immature, I could just pray for like five or ten minutes and it seemed like God present just saturate the room. And I'd just be like, oh, God is so good to be saved. But then when I got mature, I could pray days and couldn't feel him. Needed to feel him and couldn't feel him. Because it's something about God when you begin to mature that he won't move everything when you want him to move it. He's got to prove to you, you got to know you mature. You got to know you can handle more than what people say you can handle. You got to know. That's a sign of maturity. It's when God does not do it immediately anymore. I'm not saying he can't. But when you begin to mature, God has no problem telling you, I'm not going to do what you want me to do. And he expects you to be okay with that. Because you know him. You know he won't do nothing to hurt you. So I asked you for this job. But I didn't get it. But I so know you that there has to be a better job somewhere. And so I'll praise you for that better job until it comes. And I won't cry over this denial. When you know God, you don't cry when folk deny you no more. You give him a praise knowing there has to be something better. You got to mature to see him move like that. To see one door slammed in your face. And to stand there and say another one finna open. You know when some folks ain't on their feet, they don't know God like that. It's hard to sit down when somebody preaching like that. And you know God will slam a door and open another one just as fast as he let that one slam. See, the reason I get excited, I think about every door that got slammed in my face. And I say, yet will I praise you. Yet will I magnify you. You can't get to the mountain without having this type attitude. He told Paul, my grace is sufficient. He receives a word directly. Listen to me. Whether you receive it directly 
or indirectly, it has to transform you. And see, this is the problem with us. We get stuck in the transformation mode. There's no transforming taking place. You heard the word, but you didn't transform. You didn't change. You heard a word about him blessing financially, but it didn't change the way you give. Nothing changed with you. Come on. See, some transformed. Paul transformed. He had to renew his mind. Listen, based upon what God said, I'm not going to move it, but I am going to give you my grace. I'm going to give you favor, Paul. I'm going to give you loving kindness. I'm going to give you divine benefits that's going to see you through this. Okay, so if his mind going to be renewed, he now got to talk different about the trial. He can't, he can't be talking. Well, where well, God finna move it. No, he know now it's got to stay because it's a higher purpose. So now he said, I will therefore rather gladly boast. Back in the main text, he started boasting about infirmities, distresses, reproaches. For Christ's sake. For when I'm weak, then am I what? Strong. You know what happened? Paul actually renewed his mind. When you're going through something and God give you a word, it's your responsibility to renew your mind. I am a messenger. I only deliver what he say. And based upon what he say, you have to renew your mind. Better here, better coming. I don't care how long y'all been going through. Your mind needs to be renewed to, to the point to where you talking better now. You talking better in every aspect of your life. Watch even if it don't turn out the way you think it should, don't you walk out of season of better because something happened. It has to be better. You don't leave a season based upon a trial. I went through some tough stuff, but I never departed from the season of better. I kept letting God know I know it's a better season. Listen, even when it didn't feel like Right? And that's your job to renew your mind. Not your pastors. Not your spouse. Not your best friend. You have to take personal responsibility for renewing your mind based upon what God said. And when you renew your mind, you think, speak, and do according to whatever the will of God is. <laughs> 